Hey, welcome everybody. I'm John Zadar, your host, and you are watching On Top and Hot. This is Sunday, June 26th. Now, what I like to do on this show is to focus in on OTC and penny stocks that are, well, hot. Stocks you should be considering, at least getting on your watch list. Now, when I say penny stocks, I am not referring to stocks only on the OTC market. Fact is, a penny stock is any stock under $5, regardless what market it's sold on. And there are a ton of these stocks under $5 on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. And there are three good reasons you should be considering trading these stocks. One, they don't have the volume crunch like we're having down here on the OTC market. They got lots of volume on the major exchanges. You know what else they got a lot of? Cha-ching! Money. There's lots of money up there and it's easier to make a profit when people are throwing money into the pool. The third reason, very personal to me and I appreciate the most, for the most part, most brokers do not charge anything for major exchange transactions. On the OTC, I am virtually paying $7 to get in, $7 to get out. That is $14 I have to recoup before I can even start to make a profit. That is a pain. You go over to the NASDAQ, you get into a stock, oops, it's going the wrong way. I don't like it. I changed my mind. I want to get into that one. You can get in, get out, and get into that stock, which would cost you $21 on the OTC. Here was absolutely free. Changing your mind didn't cost you a penny. So yeah, trading on the major exchange penny stocks, it's good. It's profitable. I like it. So we are over here at the OTCMarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do due diligence on any stock. Doesn't matter if it's OTC or not. Fact of the matter is it's perfect for OTC because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for all the OTC stocks. Do you know how much frustration and time I save just by finding current information every time I look? I love it. But I do use this site for NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange penny stocks as well. Now, there are some bald spots, but normally I can find some information. It's a good place to start. And if I don't find everything I want, well, then I can go out to Google and waste my time searching through decades of old information. So, let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. It wasn't too bad. We did drop a little bit in dollar volume. Our standard average is $2.1 billion. We're at $1.9 billion. Our trades dropped. We were over 340,000 last week. We're now under 300,000. But share volume is starting to go back up. I say starting because we did take a dip on Thursday. Uh, for about 12 days, the volume on the OTC market has been climbing, climbing, climbing. And it hasn't done that in over a year. It hasn't even been bouncing up. Just a steady fall, fall, fall. And here in the last 12 days, she started climbing. And then Thursday, she had a pullback. And I didn't like it. And then we're back up. Now we're not at that 15 billion, but we are back into the double digits. So hopefully she will continue growing and showing us some strong volume. All right. I've got some stocks I want to share with you now. All of these stocks are in the news, at least in the last few days. All of them have had mergers and acquisitions. All of these stocks need to be considered. They're not all making gains right now, but they very well could. Let's jump into that. As you probably already noticed, we are on a split screen motif here. We've got our charts and our information up on the screen, and we're going to keep it that way for the entire show. Now, the stocks we're looking at here today, all of these have had news in just the last few days, the last week, about their mergers and their acquisitions. We are not looking at companies that had news weeks ago or months ago, only stocks that had news the last few days. However, in saying that, I really don't think any of these stocks had any news on Friday. So things could be really out of whack. I don't know what the volume's gonna look like or the charts or the prices, but I want you to keep in mind that all of these stocks are already in the midst of these deals. They've got things going on. We're just waiting for them to be completed. So put these tickers on your watch list and keep an eye on them. First ticker we're taking a look at is WPKS World Poker Store. Finished the day at just about eight and a half cents with 22% loss. Now that could be an opportunity in the making. That could be a good entry price. She is on the pink tier, limited information. This normally means that she is late filing one or more of her financial filings. And if she doesn't get them caught up in time, 
she could easily be yanked off the open market. Not delisted, but put into a holding cell, a time out, until she gets her filings caught up. That's called the expert market. And while you're on the expert market, you're out of the game. You can't have your shares being bought or sold for the most part. And if you, as an investor, are invested in that company, you too are in a timeout until they get their filings caught up and then they'll be put back onto the market and everything will be just as it was. So they really do need to get this taken care of before things get worse. They've got a verified profile here, but no verified transfer agent. That's pretty important. We do want to see that show up here sooner rather than later. Now with a name like World Poker, and in the description seeing words like blockchain technology and smartphone app, I thought for sure this was gonna be a gambling company, a gambling app. I was wrong, totally wrong. This company sells hardware. Well, I guess you'd call it hardware. They sell the cards, the betting chips, they even sell the cool poker table. They sell products. That's their business. And it has been very slow, so they do need some encouragement from somewhere. Now, they didn't have any news on Friday. June 22nd was as close as we got. So what was her relative volume on Friday? <sighs> oh, my God. Whoa. She normally does 34,000 shares a day for the last month. Friday, she did 100 shares. Now, look at that chart above. Does that look like a dead chart to you? No. So only Friday acted like that. Holy cow. And you know what's really crazy about this? It moved 100 shares total and dropped 22%. Those 100 shares caused that 22% loss. Somebody sold his shares at a very low bid price. 100 shares got him what? Maybe $12? Then he had to pay his transaction fees unless it was on Weeble. In either case, he didn't get very much. So, the price came down, not a whole lot of volume, doesn't look great in that respect. What about her share structure? All right, we got 80 million in the outstanding shares. Unrestricted is where I get the float, but they don't have anything listed here. Now, I know most of you are thinking, well, just grab that number right there. There's the float. Not really. <laughs> I know I brag about this site being current and all that, but honestly, this is the one place I find the information is either outdated or just wrong. So I just don't waste my time with this anymore. I don't. I come up here to the unrestricted shares and grab that number. But we don't have a number here, so I'm going to have to go get this for you. Hold on. I got it right back here in the corner. Uh, got it. <laughs> there you go. Can you read it? Okay, I dusted it off as fast as I could. You're at an advantage. I don't know what the float is. Now, if I honestly, I couldn't find anything, I'm just gonna throw three question marks up there. That means I tried and didn't forget. So whatever that float is. Financials, I did look these over because they don't have anything listed here. I went to their most current financial and it showed $5,000 for the entire year for consultation service. That's not even selling cards. That's consulting. And they had about 55000 in assets. So they really do need something to change here if they're going to start making any money. So hopefully this deal is going to do that. So let's jump on over there to the news. Now the news is split. We got three pieces of news here for 2022 and all the rest of this is from 2014 back. So we have a cone of silence here, a dead space of eight years. So I didn't even look at the old news. I don't even know if it's relevant. I don't think it is, but who knows? Who cares? But all three of these pieces of news are about the merge with Genuine Marketing Group. From March 10th, and I want you to remember that date, up to June 22nd, they sign the letter of intent, they sign the definitive agreement, and they complete filing the documents. And this piece of news here has got a little bit more information in it that we can glean. As you would expect right up at the top, they inform us that they have filed with their respective secretaries of state, Minnesota and Nevada, and they fully expect to be approved by July 15th of this year. So you're looking at just about two weeks away. Now there's other things that's going to happen exactly at the same time as this merger. First off, they're going to change the name. They're going to get rid of World Poker Store and become Genuine Marketing Group. 
they are also going to enact a 1 in 10 reverse split. You didn't see that coming, did you? Woo-hoo! Yeah, they're going to do a 1 in reverse split. And if you remember, the share count was 79. Let's call it 80 million. When the split is done, there's going to be about 8 million shares left. Outstanding. Now, I don't know what the uh, float is. But whatever it is, it's going to be low. It's going to be a super duper low float. Now, yes, you get into it today, you're going to lose nine-tenths of your shares. Of course, the price will go up to equate it so that you're not losing anything. But now you're going to be a part of a stock that has a super duper low float. Now, of course, you could buy after the reverse split as well. Because truth of the matter is, a lot of reverse splits, the price falls, falls, falls. People are upset that they lost their shares. However, this has been flat for so long, I don't know how people are going to feel about it. I really don't. The third thing they are going to do is increase their authorized shares. They're going to kick this up to three-quarter million shares, three-quarter billion. So they're going to have 750 million shares. Now, these aren't going to really bother us. This is money in the bank, if you will. These shares are in the bank. They can put them on the shelf and sell them as a public offering, and they would increase the share count and dilute the shareholder's value. But after you do a reverse split to turn around and do a public offering, that's just a punch in the face. I can't imagine them doing that. I mean, they can. I just can't imagine they would because investors would not like that at all. Would not. So I've got to imagine that they're going to increase their authorized share count so that they have more currency to deal with other companies with. You can use this just like money. You give millions of shares to another company instead of millions of dollars. And you can have a big portion of that company and start making money without paying a red cent. So they are doing that as well. Last thing we need to look at is who the heck is General Marketing Group Incorporated? Better known as GMG. Well, they tell us here that they are a retail and consumer focused marketing company that creates brand affinity and builds consumer confidence through its proprietary authentication system, ZP Tag. Honestly, folks, I'm not quite sure what that's all about. It looks like Genuine Marketing Group is taking over the company. It looks more like a reverse merger than anything to me. And uh, their, their business is helping other companies focus their marketing and read the consumer sentiment about what they're doing. That's as much as I can really tell from here. So you've got a merger going on that should be complete in two weeks with a reverse split that's going to make this a super duper low float. They are changing their name and increasing their authorized shares. And there has already been some excitement around this company, hasn't there? We look at that chart. We can see right here. What date is that? That's the 11th. And right there is the date that the news came out, the 10th, and boom, she started pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. And she started way down here at, uh, oh, let's call it 1.3 cents. And she got up to 15 cents. Oh, goodness, folks. That's over, that's over a thousand percent gains. Yeah, that is over a thousand percent gains in the last two weeks. She hit 15 cents here, went sideways for a couple days with a little bit of bouncing, and then here fell. Fell really fast. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. Oh boy, we can't read much there, can we? That's because she hasn't got a lot of shares. So there's your last 20 days climbing very steadily. She took a climb here halfway through the day and then fell back. Wow took her strongest climb right here on the 22nd without any more news. All I can think is maybe Twitter. I don't know. And then you had a fall. Day after day after day, she has been falling. And she is now sitting on the 20-day SMA, her strongest SMA, mind you. There's no 50 on the board. There's no 100 on the board. Just the 10 and the 20. So it seems to be playing to the 20. It was on the 10. You can see that all the way up following the 10, and then it broke the 10 and has landed on the 20. Technicals look pretty weak right now. Look like she's going to continue falling, and she may very well. You could get a better deal over here. What, what do I say about buying before or after? If it was me, folks, I would probably buy the stock after the reverse split. 
Honestly, I would, simply because I expect the stock to fall after the reverse split. I see that so often, and you can probably get it at a much better price if you think the company has any gusto to continue going. We definitely need some more due diligence on this because there's not a lot there to be seen from either company to, well, invest in. The next company we're going to take a look at is So High, ticker S-O-H-I. Let me back this out four hours. So we had a low back here of 26 cents and a high of $3.38. Wow. And right now she is at $1.10 and has pretty much been going sideways in this area. She has broke her 50. Now she has had news here in the last couple of days. Let's go check this out. This is so high, ticker S-O-H-I, also known as Sortis Holdings. She finished the day at $1.10 with just 10% gains. She's on the pink tier, also limited information, meaning she's most likely late on her financial filings is gonna have to get those caught up in a short amount of time. They do have a verified profile and a transfer agent, so she looks good in all of that regard. Now they tell us here that Sortis Holdings is becoming a collection of brands, and they are going to power these brands across the hotel and lodging industry, coffee, food and beverage, and beauty and wellness. So they are widespread there, and I'm not quite sure all of what they're doing, what sort of products they've got. So more DD will help in that regard. Now they had news as well on June 22nd, nothing on Friday. So what was her relative volume on Friday? E gads. Oh man. Ooh. Okay. We have 977 shares a day being sold for the last month. Not even a thousand. And Friday we only sold a hundred shares. Again, just a hundred shares. Really unbelievable. And that hundred shares caused it to rise. 10%. Now, I'm going to hope we actually have a low float here. Yes! Boom, 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 boom! We do have a low float. Outstanding shares is just under 50 million, but our float is just over 10 million. Really nice float. What are the financials with this company? Well, they are making some money, but a lot less than they were. We got to take those three zeros and put that behind there. So back in 2018, it was over 7 million. 2019 down to 2 million. The COVID year, boom, out of business. And then right now they're at about $170,000. But it doesn't cost them anything to make the money. They don't pay anything for supplies or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure how they're doing this. So they got to keep every single penny that they earned. Disclosures, what do we got over here? Of course they are a little late on their financials. Uh, 1231 doesn't look like they have anything for this year. Nope, that's what's missing here. So they need to get their March and their June quarterly reports out. And it looks like they do not have any attorney letters here either. And they're going to need attorney letters for this annual report as well. Anything down here in the SEC filings? Oh, 1994. Goodness gracious. So no, we don't have any recent filings here but we do have some news if we go over here to the news all right so we've had news 2020 22 right here is 2021 and right here is 2022 at the beginning of january sort of holdings initiates transition to an operator of scalable lifestyle brands which is kind of what their description said they update the board of director changes and then the news today Sortis Holdings acquires WLCR to accelerate digital capabilities. Now I know, I told you this came out today, but it actually came out June 22nd. They tell us here that the company announced that they had acquired their longtime partner, WLCR, which is a full service digital creative agency bent on direct to consumer growth acceleration using their technology based solutions. Now, they also tell us that the Sortis team has maintained a strong partnership with WLCR since early 2020. And this acquisition really just comes as a natural, mutually beneficial progression of that relationship. Now, they go on to tell us about WLCR, which was founded in 2009 to create digital advantages for authentic and meaningful brands. Wasn't too sure what that actually means, but when you look at their website, you do get a list of meaningful brands, don't you? We got Intel here, 
Pabst Blue Ribbon, Arby's, Saks, and is that Nike or Puma? I really don't know, but these are big influential companies. Now, originally I thought this company was doing media, marketing, advertising, but they're not. Up on the button where I change my pages back and forth, on their button on this page, it says we build websites. So there you go. I mean, you would think it would be somewhere here on the actual website itself, but it isn't. It's a very short website and it wasn't there, but it was on the button. Now it seems to me that Sohai is working with products, but their finances confuse me because they're not paying anything for all the money they're making. And that normally only happens with digital products. So there is gonna be more due diligence necessary here. I just don't have time to do a deep dive when I'm covering this many stocks. Now when we look at that chart again, we got a low here of 26 cents and a high of 338. But you come down to that 20 day one hour, it's a whole different ball game. We got a high of $1.25 on June 3rd and a low of a dollar on June 22nd, the day the news came out of the acquisition. Now it wasn't a big drop, it was only eight cents, but that's not the point. The point is it dropped on the day of the news. Then it didn't trade at all the next day. And then Friday we had that 100 shares and it jumped 10%, 10 cents. Now the technicals look stinky. They don't look like they're gonna be of any hope for this to rise. I honestly think this is going to fall. So I would wait, I would wait for one thing, particularly volume. That's what this is missing. They've got news, they've got two decent companies. You could do some more DD on them, but the only thing that's really missing here is volume. So when you see this company's volume start to skyrocket and shoot, that's when you need to jump into this company. We're not in it for the investment, we're in it for the play. Get in there, take that money, get out, put it in your pocket, and go find another stock. Speaking now, this next stock is very interesting and exciting. This is ticker FINMY, also known as Leonardo SPA. This is a very large defense contracting company based out of Rome, Italy. Now, they are just about ready to leave Pennyville. They are at $5.05. Boop, boop. And they are on the pink tier with limited information. Again, that means that they are most likely late on filing their financials and are going to have to get that taken care of. Now, I normally don't like to show you stocks over $5, but folks, when I seen the information around this company, what they do, how much money they're making, and the news that came out June 21st, I had to show this to you. Just didn't have a choice. So, what does this company do? Well, that's where it starts to get interesting. We're gonna jump over here to Wikipedia. They got so much information, now I'm not gonna go through it all. But I do wanna read enough so you can see how big this picture really is. Leonardo is an Italian multinational company specializing in aerospace, defense, and security. Headquartered in Rome, Italy, the company has 180 sites worldwide. It is the eighth largest defense contractor in the world based on their 2018 revenues. The company is partially owned by the Italian government, you ready for this? Which owns 30.2% of the company's shares. Wow, they are the largest shareholder. And then down here we get some more information. Leonardo is present worldwide in about 20 countries. Commercially, there are about 150 countries in the world that use the products, systems, and services supplied by Leonardo. Its production activities and its main industrial commercial bases, their factories, are located in Italy, the United Kingdom, Poland, and the United States. Moreover, Leonardo has gained significant presence in France and Germany and has partnered with various international industry collaborations. The company is an ITER supplier. I haven't got a clue what that means, but it must be important. You wouldn't put it there unless it was. In December 2021, Leonardo Electronics announced it would be building a semiconductor factory in Oro Valley, Arizona with the construction beginning in the first half of 2022. So they should already be involved in that. So you can see they've got a lot going on. And did you notice those pictures above? Those are the type of things they build. These are the things they're involved with. Planes, helicopters, big guns, satellites. 
And you can see they've got a lot going on. Here are all their subsidiaries, 100% owned. Here's all their joint ventures, all the companies that they're working with, and whatever other is. But you can see they do have a lot going on. And this one company, this one subsidiary right here, Leonardo DRS, is the one that was in the news June 21st. Now, as I said, there was no news today, so there was no catalyst. What was the relative volume around this company today? Oh my God, what is going on here? Jeez, this company normally gets about 5,000 shares a day, and Friday she did under 500 shares, less than 10% of her norm. All this great news and nobody's buying. Wow, I am confused. Share structure, what do we got over here? All right, another one where they don't tell me the unrestricted shares is blank. We don't even have float listed here. I see they're outstanding is 578 million. So I'm going to go out and search that and I'm going to throw it right there. Got it? Good for you. Hopefully they're not question marks this time. Now, financials. They don't have any financials here. So I went and got a page, and are you ready for this, folks? I am ready to blow your mind. Now, surprisingly, I wasn't able to find any financial information for FinMe over on the OTC market. There was nothing on the financial page, and there wasn't a single financial filing to even peek in on. So I've jumped over here to Yahoo Finance just to see what their yearly revenues are so we have an idea. So we got to do the same thing here that we do at the OTC market. we got to add three zeros to the back of these numbers. Looking at the end of 2021 and what her total revenues were, putting those three zeros on the back here, we have over $14 billion in one year. $14 billion. I am saying that right. Now think about that. You're talking about an OTC stock at $5 that is doing over $14 billion worth of revenue a year. And that's not a fluke. Over the last few years, they're doing between $12 and $13 billion. Right through COVID, as if it never even happened. Didn't bother them at all. Now, the news is even more exciting than the numbers. We're going to jump on over here. This came out June 21st. RADA, which is the ticker for a company on the NASDAQ, agrees to all stock merger with Leonardo DRS. RADA Electronics Industries, an Israel-based provider of small form tactical radars and Leonardo DRS Inc., have agreed to merge and become a combined public company. But it's probably not going to be the way you think. U.S.-based mid-tier defense technology provider Leonardo DRS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Leonardo SPA, ticker F-I-N-M-Y. Leonardo DRS will acquire 100% share capital in RADA in exchange for 19.5% equity ownership in the combined company. Right? The OTC company is buying RADA. The combined company will maintain the name of Leonardo DRS and is also anticipated to be trading under the ticker DRS. This is a reverse merger, folks. You've got an OTC company taking over a NASDAQ position. They're going to change the name, they're going to change the ticker, and RADA will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Leonardo DRS. So there's a lot going on here. The little OTC company, which isn't little, is taking over this NASDAQ ticker. Now they don't tell us when. We don't have a date here of when this is gonna happen, so we've gotta keep our eyes and ears open for that information. There's more information here about dollars and share value and stuff like that, but I really wanna know when this is gonna be complete. Let's take a look now at that six month, four hour chart for Fimni. Well, that's surprising. Look at that. We've got an uptrend since the middle of December. When we hit our low bubble here of $3.24, we have been climbing ever since. We just smashed the 200-day SMA here at the end of February and have not looked back. Haven't even gotten close to bouncing on it. And right now we are at that 505. Technicals, really nothing special. Nothing there to talk about. Let's go on over to that 20-day, one-hour view. Hit that high, dropped, climbed back up, and fell hard. Crushed every SMA, hit a low bubble here, absolutely did. Came up and bounced onto the new SMA, the 200-day SMA. Hit its head 
really hard there. So hard it fell down to his knees right there. Brand new low bubble. We got another strong bounce out of it, another drop. We very well could see another bounce up. However, the technicals don't exactly agree with that assessment. They are pretty lackadaisical and cool. Five day, five minute. Woo! Look at that downhill. Right on down. So everything looks like it is still actually petering out just a wee bit right now. And if we take a quick look over here at Rada, this is the company they're merging with. My question is, which one is going to do the most surging? Is it going to be Rada or Femni? Now, both companies are going to get gains. I'm sure of that. Rada is going to be a new company. That's going to be Leonardo's new DCR, right? That's going to be a new ticker on the NASDAQ. So you're going to have a lot of people seeing it who have money. That shouldn't be a problem here. She was up here at $16. I don't know if she'll get above it, but she's in the right market to catch attention. The other company, Femni, they own the company that bought Rada. It's basically a spin out for them. They took their subsidiary off the OTC market and spun it out to the NASDAQ. So of course they're gonna make money too because it is their company that's in charge. Rada becomes a whole subsidiary for Leonardo and they own the ticker. It's their ticker, their name. So I expect both companies to have growth. Which one's gonna have the most? I really don't know, but I would put Rada, which won't be Rada at the time, but it will be when the news comes out. We're looking for a news press or an 8K to tell us when this deal is going to be finalized. And that's when things are going to explode. Put them on your watch list. Watch the volume. Whether the news comes out or not, when volume comes in, that's when you need to get into. All right, folks, that's all the time I got. There are lots of other stocks out there that are doing deals. Do your DD. It's really easy. Go on over to Google, put in OTC merger, see what comes up. One other detail when you do that search, knock all the time out of it. Look for one week or one month. You don't need to be looking at everything. So Google has that filter for time. Put an OTC merger, OTC acquisition, and see what you find. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.